Good, hi, this is Stu for the Purple Valley Asana School. And we're, today we're going to be looking at Janusha C. Not my favorite posture, which is good for me to talk about it because um, I can get rid of some of the things that I don't like about it. So um, we've done A and B up till now, so we've been working on some rotation at the hip to actually prepare us for this posture. And then we enter this, which is, you know, it can be a little bit painful on the toes and then can put the knee in a precarious position, uh, potentially. So what we want to think about is how we're actually going to get into it. So if we watch what Carolina does as she prepares to bring this foot in. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to land up with the foot facing down with the toes bent and the heel up towards the ceiling as much as possible into the center of the groin, yeah? And with our straight leg active. So if we see what Carolina does as she sort of gets ready. So she's getting hold of her foot and yeah. Okay, yes, let's go with this, yeah. <laughs> Which is also the way I used to do it and is, is one of the reasons I don't like it, yeah. So, what we saw Carolina do there was she took hold of her foot, sort of like this, and brought it in here, yeah. Now, what are we doing as we're doing this? This is becoming a lever, our foot is becoming a lever, and it's rotating the lower leg relative to the femur. So the, the knee is designed as a hinge joint. It has some rotation to it when the, actual, when the knee is flexed, but it's not a movement we want to encourage too much because it's the ligaments around the knee that are preventing those sorts of movements. So this is actually a posture that I deliberately cut out of the practice for many years because as I was taught, like Carolina, to go into it here, and place this in and then place that down. I always felt I was getting a little bit too much stress in the knee, yeah? We'll talk about what to do with the knee if it's off the floor in a minute. So then, talking to Petri recently, and I said, I don't like it, and he said to me, well, how are you doing it? So he said, well, try it like this instead. And so I much prefer this now, and we get Carolina to do it too. If you really flex the knee and bring the heel to your bum, and then rotate this as one unit. So the work is coming from the hip, which is what we're normally talking about. We want the rotation to happen at the hip. So if you can rotate that around, and then bring it towards the front, like about a 40 degree angle, and then sit up and come forwards, then we haven't done any talking at the knee. It's still going to be a little bit of external rotation in the upper leg um, and external rotation. So there's this idea happening there. But it seems a lot more solid and a lot more comfortable for me to actually be in, in this sort of position. Maybe we'll get Carolina to have a, a go at that and see whether she notices a difference. So really work here and then keep it like that and try and rotate the whole thing out. Place the toes down. Press the heel towards the groin. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, is it? Yeah, so you're going to rotate the whole thing around and bring the heel in towards the groin. Yeah, and do the knee go down and then lift up and forwards. Yeah, and place your knee back down again and even let that come forward slightly. Yeah, and now press strongly with the heel into the thigh of the straight leg. Does that feel any more comfortable, any different for you? Mm. Probably felt nothing wrong with it in the first place. No, but it feels uh, more safe. More safe, yeah. more grounded. So if this is a posture that you have issues with or you don't like it, just try going into it a little bit differently like that. So really keeping this unit flexed and together, do the rotation at the knee, then working with the ankle, so we're bringing it really strongly in and then lifting up and coming forward. If you're a guy, you might have complications with your clutter. You need to sort of get it out the way. I do anyway. And then really pushing in strongly here. If this knee is up, then if it's only up a little bit, I never like to see knees in the air. So just because we often don't use props in Ashtanga, but you have a towel to wipe your face, just stick your towel underneath your knee if it's up in the air. And that just gives it some support. If it's like way up in the air, then use a block under your thigh or your knee, yeah? If it's out of the question, then, you know, why not just work on a different aspect of the posture, which would maybe be 
opening the feet and the, and the, and the toes, yeah, and the sole of the foot. So you can do that quite nicely just by sitting down on your heels with the, the toes in a flexed position. So that opens up the whole back of the foot, creates some length in the thighs, yeah, and it works on the knee flexion. So you can work on different aspects of the posture without actually going fully into it. But let's bring Carolina back and get her in it, and then we can talk about what actions are going on once we've dealt with that particular leg. So she's going to try and keep that closed. She's going to rotate the whole thing together and bring, bring that heel in and then work up and forwards and yeah, nice. And then of course what we tend to do is once we're in the posture, we're so concerned with what was going on with that thigh that we forget about this leg, yeah? So this wants to be really strong and active, pressing through, like with most of our forwards folds, through the ball of the foot, pulling back the toes slightly, something slightly under that knee, if you like it, yeah? And then what she's trying to do is she's trying to come, try and to lift up and lengthen, and then she's going to fold over this leg. So we need to actually create a little bit of rotation to bring her chest towards the center line here. So it won't be that she's going to have a complete flat forward fold because we've added a little bit of a slight twist in order to get her over and across to this leg. But you know, it's pretty much there. So from there she's thinking of this hip sinking down. And although we, you know, we worked on external rotation of this hip to get into it, then you know, see what feels right for you when now you're here. Because I'm a great one in believing that not the same thing for everybody. You might want to just have the essence of a little bit of media rotation or the essence. And when I say essence, it's like the intention rather than a, a movement, yeah? But the strong work is coming from the pressing of the heel into the inner thigh, yeah? And the relaxing of the toes so as you can get that movement. And then keep in mind, once we've lost sight of that foot, that that foot is actually active, then you're going to be breathing the way you do. And this is, you know, quite a challenging posture because of the pain of the toes sometimes. So just really think of drawing out the length of your breath and that will actually allow you to find a bit more comfort in the posture. Good, hope that helps. Play with that with the knee. If it's a knee thing, you know, be very, very sensitive about your knees because, you, you know, once you've damaged them, we use them all the time in the yoga and it really is a hard journey back. So just don't go there in the first place is my uh, thing. Just really look after them. If you sense some pain, just back off and do it differently because it will be restriction somewhere else. It will be restriction in the hip or in the front of the ankle in this particular posture. It's nothing to do with the knee. You don't need to open the knee. You need to open up other parts of the body. Yeah? So if you feel pain, just ease back and work with other things. Good. And after that little lecture, <laughs> we'll see you again soon, hopefully. Take care. Good, good.